Do you think the woman with the issue of blood cared about her hair? Do you think the woman with the issue of blood cared about what she looked like? The woman, all right, I'm about to take it off. It ain't never, it ain't never. Today's video is about a very important issue that has been stirred up on the internet between John MacArthur and women missionaries. A divine statement answers the question, what does the Bible say about women missionaries? It is in verse 35, the last part of the verse, it is not proper for women to speak in church. That's not ambiguous, that's not clear at all. It is not right for a woman to speak in church. That is an absolute prohibition. Would you be a reverent woman? If you were a woman preacher, that doesn't reverence God. They're to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good. Did you see that? Of course women can teach. Women are called to teach. They're called to teach other women teaching what is good, verse 4, so that they may encourage the young women. What we read then in verse 35 is it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in church. It is shameful. That is a recognized judgment on all such behavior, the same as teaching for sordid gain in Titus 1 verse 11, disgraceful, shameful gain. It's sort of like false prophets doing what they do for money. And this unmistakable, divine law and command is so absolute that we go back to verse 34, and the section actually begins, as you will note if you have an ESV, as in all the churches of the saints, the women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak. And then verse 35. It is improper for women to speak in church, as in all the churches of the saints, always and everywhere. Older women teach the younger women, and obviously they teach their children Yes, women teach. Yes, they teach what is essentially good. And what is that that they teach? What is that good that they teach? They teach young women, here's the lesson, love your husband, love your children, be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands so that the Word of God will not be dishonored. When women are not subject to their husbands individually in a marriage or women are not subject to their leaders in the church collectively, the Word of God is dishonored. You can't say you're a woman preacher preaching the Bible and be by virtue of that very role dishonoring God and His Word. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Take it. Perhaps women pastors and women preachers are the most obvious evidence of churches rebelling against the Bible. I can't think of anything that's as far-reaching and transcends all denominations as the woman's rebellion against the Word of God with regard to women preachers. Women who pastor, women who preach in a church are a disgrace. And they openly reflect opposition to the clear command of the Word of God. This is flagrant disobedience. It has been acceptable in our culture and now acceptable even in the evangelical world. Yes, women teach. They teach out of a life that is reverent in its behavior, and that means it reverences God to the point that it obeys the Word of God. They're not malicious gossips. They're not enslaved to much wine. They teach what is good, and what is the good they teach? They encourage young women to love their husbands, love their children, be sensible, pure, that means holy, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands so that the Word of God will not be dishonored. That's the great teaching responsibility of older women to teach younger women the necessity of the home being the priority, loving husbands, loving children, being subjected to your husband so that the Word of God will not be dishonored. If women don't behave in that way, then the Word of God is what? 
It's dishonored. So all these women running around as preachers, supposedly teaching the Bible, are defying what the Bible says. And they're propagating some kind of Christianity that is whimsical about how it handles the Word of God. You might wonder, why do I call my program Enjoying Everyday Life? Well, I'm very fond of John 10.10 that 10, says, The thief, who is the devil, only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And it took me a long time to learn that it was okay to enjoy life. I felt like I should be working all the time or producing something all the time. I didn't grow up in an atmosphere where I was taught to enjoy life, and so it took me a long time. And I would imagine there's a lot of you that maybe feel the same way. And God wants us to enjoy our life, and I believe that when we know the Word of God, which I teach every day on the program, that that's how we can learn to enjoy our life. So, in case you ever wondered, that's why I call it Enjoying Everyday Life. Best-selling religious book of the time, the title of it is Your Best Life Now. I have seen stacks and stacks and stacks of those books everywhere I've gone. Out of curiosity, I want to know what's in the book. And so I uh, found this on page 5, God wants this to be the best time of your life. On another page it says, happy, successful, fulfilled individuals have learned how to live their best life now. On another page it says, as you put the principles found in these pages to work today, you will begin living your best life now. And that is absolutely true if you're not a Christian. This is it. You better get the book <laughs> because your next life is going to be infinitely worse than this one. This is your best life now. In fact, it's your only life because in the world to come you will only exist in a perpetual state of dying with no hope, no satisfaction, no meaning, no joy, and no future, and no relief from eternal suffering. That's the worst life possible. If you don't understand God's word, you will fall for that lie. It's sad to see hundreds of thousands of people listen to Sarah Jakes and Joyce Meyer every week and their teaching is terrible. In fact, they read the Word of God but they do not understand what God says, they do not understand the rules of the church and they do not follow God's commandments. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.